reprising the role that shot him into the big leagues 40 years ago. Eddie Murphy's Axel F is still causing mayhem when chasing down suspects in Detroit, and after his latest chase results in more damage to property, his boss and old friend, Deputy Chief Jeffrey Friedman, Paul Reisner reprising his role from the earlier films, is forced to step down, advising Axel to take some time out and reconnect with his estranged daughter in L.A. Working in Beverly Hills, his daughter Jane, played by Taylor Page, is a criminal defence attorney who's working with ex-cop turned PI Billy Rosewood, Judge Reinhold reprising his role, to prove the innocence of her client who has been framed as part of a cover-up of corruption. Axel returns to Beverly Hills and swiftly finds himself caught up in the case as he must confront his own prejudice towards the criminal elements and face up to his history with his daughter. Murphy slides back into the role effortlessly and within the opening scenes as he chaotically chases down a group of thieves through Detroit that old charm and spark surfaces reminding me of the films of the 80s in a comfortable manner. Indeed much of this film does seem to tug on nostalgia for the early films. Well the first two at least as pretty much everybody has forgotten the third film for all the right reasons. With faces popping up for cameos, small references to earlier events added to the flavour. Yes, it's nostalgia bait. But let's be honest here, even the second film was just that. Following the beats of the first film, inserting characters from that first film again, as though there aren't enough people in LA to be able to draw from. And we were fine with that. So you know what? I'm fine with the nostalgic elements being thrown in here especially as they're actually worked into the story in a more fluid way than, say, the recent Ghostbusters Frozen Empire film did, which just used them as side gags. This means we get to see reprising faces of Rosewood and Taggart, as well as Bronson Pinchot as Serge, alongside a few nods to Axel's antics in LA in previous decades. We do also, however, get the inclusion of Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Detective Bobby Abbott, bringing some fresh energy into the mix, and he certainly makes for a strong inclusion. It gives a partner for Axel to bounce off, given the back seat that Rosewood and Taggart are taking this time, especially with the additional aspect of Abbott's past romance with Axel's daughter. As for the daughter herself, Paige holds her own well, and the more personal and broken father-daughter relationship lends some heart to the proceedings, with Murphy and Paige really selling it all. There's fun chases, there's shootouts, and there's actual investigation this time, not just coincidentally stumbling on evidence. And even though there isn't any mystery as to who is behind all the corruption, it isn't an issue. Because as with the previous films, well, the first two anyway, there is so much fun to be had with Axel that you just enjoy being along for the ride. I also want to point out that this film shows how well Murphy is ageing, and it's hard to realise that this is set 40 years after the events of that first film. At least until John Ashton and Judge Reinhold crop up and then remind you how many years have actually passed. What could have felt like a tired and out-of-date reprisal of an old action franchise actually manages to deliver in much of the same tone and manner as those earlier films, not the third. I'd place this firmly alongside the second film as an unnecessary but thankfully enjoyable sequel. Directed by Mike Cheslick and written by Cheslick and Ryland Bricks and Cold Hughes, Hundreds of Beavers is a slapstick comedy that draws on retro video game quest tropes, is shot and presented in a 1920s to 1930s black and white comedy style, with a rapid fire approach of the classic era of Looney Tunes cartoons, especially Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck. The tale sees a 19th century Applejack salesman, Jean Kayak, have his farm destroyed by beavers and he has to survive in the wilderness. The first act is his struggle to hunt and survive, working out how to slowly gain experience and trade with a local trader, and maybe, just maybe, woo the trader's daughter. He soon becomes a mighty hunter, and the second and third act work towards him completing quests in a constant chain-like flow until he can gain the ultimate prize. Now, as this film began, I initially wondered whether I'd made the wrong choice, The old style look and feel seemingly look like it could go really messy very swiftly. With over 100 minutes of runtime ahead of me, I was worried I was in for a rough ride. However, within the first five minutes, the chuckles started. And pretty soon, the belly laughs followed. As the absolute chaos of comedy 
that was presented made its way comfortably into my chuckle centre. The look of the film swiftly won me over, and I began rooting for the unlikely hero as puns and japery began dropping out in rapid progression. Small pratfall moments or repeating callback elements had me erupting in chuckles every time they landed. One such element being whenever any of the rabbits that the hunter is trying to catch start to flee from him. One inevitably trips and falls with a kasplat kind of noise in the snow before jumping up and fleeing. And every time that pratfall made me laugh. Having the varied animals all being played by people in very silly looking costumes makes it even more wonderfully surreal. This is a film that you have to see to appreciate, and no amount of me trying to explain how great it is to people will ever do it justice. Knowing that it costs so little to make, only $150,000, with the effects and layouts being done on Adobe After Effects, yet it manages to entertain better than any other comedy of recent years. It just highlights that sometimes budgets aren't as important as great ideas. If you want over an hour and a half of crazy, surreal, old school slapstick comedy with a rapid fire approach to delivery that will keep you giggling throughout, then look no further than hundreds of beavers. Well and truly recommended.